Hello there, my fishy friends. My name is Peter, and today's episode is a coho catch and cook. It's early December here in Chilliwack, and the salmon season's pretty much over. But yesterday was my 50th birthday, so I set myself a mission to catch a coho on my birthday. And today, we're gonna have a campfire and cook it up. I'm gonna roll on some footage on how that went, and then I'm gonna get to the real challenge and that's starting a campfire here in the rainforest. I don't know if you can see but everything is dripping wet. It's been raining for a couple of days on and off and getting a fire started under these conditions is... yeah well I'll show you how I do it. Thanks for coming along let's get into it. So this is how my birthday fishing went. First spot I got to, there were some jack coho there and I got one within the first couple of casts. Jacks are usually quite aggressive and easy to get and there tend to be quite a few of them in the late season. So jacks are small coho, they're three-year-old males and they come back to spawn before they're actually adults. This was a hatchery fish so I killed it. I thought it might be the only one I catch that day and then after that it was a bit of a grind. I hit four different spots over the next four hours and it's just a lot of casting and switching back and forth between drifting row and twitching jigs and it wasn't actually until about 2 maybe 2 30 when I finally found some fish and after that the fishing was good once you get into a school of fish and they won't be in the same spot every day um, I got one wild fish And it's quite important with these wild fish to treat them gently, make sure they don't get damaged. I try not to take them out of the water. Keep them wet, keep them protected in the net, and give them a quick and gentle release. So about 10 minutes later, I got another wild fish. I was experimenting with a little bit of a different camera technique where I'm holding the camera in a clip between my teeth and tell the angle needed adjusting a little bit. Another beautiful wild fish. I want a hatchery now. Goodbye fish. Oh, I'm going the wrong way buddy. And about 10 minutes later, I finally found what I had been looking for all day, a hatchery fish. There we go. A nice hatchery fish. Happy birthday to me. About time. This fish definitely has some color to it. In October, I might have let it go, but in December, this is about as nice as they're gonna get. A nice little four, four and a half pound fish. Beautiful colors. All right, so first things first, let's get a fire started. I'm gonna give you a little tutorial on how to start a campfire in the middle of the rainforest in the middle of winter. It's not easy, and I'm not gonna pretend this is some sort of survival situation. I came here prepped with a couple little things, right? So I brought an axe, it's pretty hard without an axe, and I brought some fire starter. So you can buy all sorts of fancy fire starters online, but some birch bark is what I like to use. It's cheap, well, it's free. And it really starts to fire really well, I'll show you. The other thing you wanna do is find yourself some pieces of old cedar. So there's a log jam behind me, I went through it and I picked up some pieces. So if you don't know what cedar looks like, this is what cedar looks like. It's got this sort of long linear grain and this piece has probably been on the forest floor for like 50 years. It's a highly rot resistant sort of wood and cedar tends to stay dry inside for a long time. So it's been raining for about four days now and everything is soaking wet. All the kindling is soaked right through but this big piece should have some dry wood right in the middle and cedar is easy to split so let's get to it give that a try
So you can see right here, it's got that wonderful sauna smell to it. And only about the outside half an inch is wet. So inside is nice and dry, and I'll be able to split this with minimal effort and get a fire started. See, that's the thing with cedar. You can split off these nice long bits. Wood looks rotten on the outside, but it's great on the inside. Well, this is embarrassing. I was rushing a little bit and I just nicked myself with the axe. It's not like I was swinging. I was very careful about that, but I was picking up some wood and the axe at the same time and got myself on the back of the thumb. It's just a little nick. But now there's blood on the firewood. Damn it. <laughs> All right, let's get to cooking. So I don't know why, but everybody wants to make their fire pit round with rocks around it. If you're trying to cook something in the bush, all you need is two rocks that are kind of flat on one top and you space them apart just far enough so that your frying pan fits. Make it kind of level and that way you can have a small fire, you don't need to use a lot of wood and you can cook in a hurry because the heat is contained. So yeah, let's get to it. A little bit of birch bark, you'll see how beautiful these burns and it burns for a long time. Let's try kind of a thinner piece. So once you get birch bark going, it kind of burns just, just the right speed so your fire starter doesn't disappear right away. And it's like it's soaked with gasoline. I don't know what it is about birch bark.
You've got fire, baby. So while my fire was making some coals and getting ready to cook, I went out to make a few casts. And it didn't actually take very long to twitch another coho out of there. And I quickly discovered that uh, I'm not all that good at tailing fish. You know, I think to tail a fish, you have to tire it right out. And you also have to grab that tail really hard. And I'm reluctant to do that because I think it bruises the fish. So, yeah, next time I'll bring in it. Well, that got messy fast. Well, it's a hatchery fish, so it could want it, but. why a landing net is such a good idea. You're trying to mess with a fish like this to release it. It's I just can't get a grip on that tail. There he goes. That fish was a bit dark. It was a hatchery fish. I could have killed it, but uh, we'll try for a better one. So the fish recipe I'm going to teach you guys today is the very easiest and by far my favorite fish recipe. Really all you need is two ingredients. Well three including the fish. So this is a fillet from my birthday coho yesterday and all I'm going to do is I'm going to pour some soy sauce on there and let it soak for about five minutes. You don't want to marinate it in the soy sauce very long otherwise the salt just overpowers everything and there's no need to really hide the flavor of this fish. It's going to be awesome. The other thing you need is some butter. So just regular butter. And I'm going to get the frying pan heating up and I'm going to get the butter melted. These are some cooked potatoes. I'm going to heat them up with the fish. So, while that cooks, why don't we chat about, I don't know, the big 5-0. I don't know, it's kind of a big deal in my life. I uh, spent like the last year kind of thinking about it. It's like 50, right? It's half my adult life is done with. What do I want to do with the other half? I don't really have a lot of regrets for the first half of my life. Maybe I wish I'd applied myself a little bit more at university because I ended up in a construction job instead of maybe a science job like I should have. I think I would have been a pretty good like marine biologist or something. Who knows? Financially I would have been off about the same. I make really good money in construction and it's, it's kind of creative work and I enjoy it. That's kind of my only regret. I mean there's some people in my life where I kind of wish I'd been nicer to them treated them with more kindness and respect and you know I, that's kind of that sums up all my regrets I mean there's some awesome things in my life I have three beautiful kids they're 
teenage daughters of mine. It, it, they're just they're the joy of my life. I always have this little kind of feeling of guilt when I'm out here doing my own thing, like I should be with them. But you know, they're teenagers now, and they kind of they like their own time just as much as anybody. So I don't feel like I'm neglecting them. Yeah, but, you know, what do I want to do with the second half of my adult life? I don't know. A little bit more of this. Who would have thought, like, 35,000 subscribers on YouTube? It's kind of neat. It's interesting. Um, I'm not 100% sure if it's a good thing in my life or not. It's an interesting hobby. It uh, allows me to be creative and tell stories and show people a little bit about my life. Maybe teach people a little something. You know, I think teaching is important. Passing on your skills and knowledge is, is kind of a big deal. Always has been in society. So, yeah, you know, I think I'll, I'll keep doing YouTube for all it's worth. It's, it doesn't, like, pay even for itself. My channel probably doesn't make enough to pay for all the fishing gear and all the camera equipment that I buy every year, but it's pretty close. It's kind of self-sustaining. certainly doesn't pay for all the work that I put into it. Um, yeah, thanks for everybody that subscribed so far. I never asked you guys to, but it's been pretty amazing. It's, it's very flattering when you're a creator and a storyteller and people want to listen to your stories and see your creations. It's, it's the best compliment you can give a YouTuber, right? Is to subscribe to their channel. And it's the ultimate democracy. You, you kind of, uh, you know, if you subscribe to a channel, that channel, it's like you're voting to have it thrive and continue. And if you don't subscribe to a channel, like if people don't subscribe, then the channel just withers and people give up. And that's how it goes. So yeah, you get your vote. So. I don't know if you can see this really well. I mean, it's not too hot. So this salmon, you can see the white has kind of gone up about halfway up the fish. That means it's time to flip it over. Most people overcook their fish. Salmon, especially when it's fresh like this from the river, I mean, you can eat it raw. This fish was a maybe not quite sushi grade, but I've eaten fish in similar condition, made sushi out of it, and it was fine. People seem to think that the fish uh, kind of goes rotten as soon as it hits fresh water. That is just not the case. The meat gradually gets softer, but it doesn't really lose the, that outstanding salmon flavor. I eat fish probably two, three times a week all year long, and I don't get tired of it. It's uh, really amazing to have these fish here. I grew up in a landlocked country in the middle of Europe where the salmon disappeared probably 200 years ago at the start of the Industrial Revolution. So, yeah, I, I don't know, I just feel blessed every time I go down to the river and pull out one of these beautiful silver fish and get to take it home and eat it. So thanks to the hatchery staff for all that. And um, yeah, I'm hungry. <laughs> this is lunch for me. And uh, I can't wait to eat it. It's looking delicious already. Yeah, I don't know. December coho is kind of hard to get. There aren't a lot of them, but there's also very little competition on the river. So there are very few anglers targeting them. And uh, it's, it's kind of the in-between, right? The, because the fish are really hard to get, you have to really know what you're doing. You have to put in a lot of time to get a coho this time of year. Most people don't think they, they want to bother. And steelheading hasn't really started yet. There are a few steelhead in the river right now, but really just a few. I've heard of a couple already being caught. And um, they're apparently they're small fish and, and uh, not hatchery, so the steelhead run is just starting but really the steelhead don't start coming in until January so December is a very quiet month on the river if you enjoy peace and quiet and fishing by yourself this is a good time to come out here and I know somebody's gonna drop a comment like well you know there you are promoting it and uh, you should just keep your mouth shut 
about the fact that there are even fish in the river. Well, it's not exactly a secret, you know. Everybody knows that there are still some fish left. They're spawning in here till January when we aren't even allowed to keep any. Uh, but, um, so yeah, you know, I really don't feel like I'm letting the cat out of the bag. There's always going to be some negative comments and some haters. It's, it's so easy, right, to just drop something negative. Much harder to drop something positive and that's why I appreciate it when people leave positive comments in my videos. I think this is kind of a much longer format than I usually do. And uh, yeah, let me know if you like that or if you don't. Campfire chats. It's kind of weird, right? I'm talking to myself, but really I'm talking to all you guys out there too. And uh, yeah, it's just an interesting dynamic for sure. I think this fish is getting pretty close to done. Let's have a taste. Oh, that is so good. I can't wait to chow on it. Fish jumping out there. I want to go catch one. I don't want to eat first. Oh man, that's so good. Anybody that commented about how this is a boot and it's I should have let it go. They really don't know what they're talking about. This fish is just amazing uh, it's you know it's it's moist it's got that beautiful coho flavor well, that's just perfect no fishiness to it whatsoever all right I think I'm gonna dig in here flip it over and eat straight from the pan The only thing that's missing is a beer, right? Well, there we go. My favorite beer, Okanagan Springs Pale Ale. I don't know why I like this stuff so much, but I do. Cheers. Cheers to fishing. Cheers to turning 50. Life is good. And thanks for coming along. Thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, Merry Christmas.